Welcome back to another Reaper blog video. This is what's new in Reaper 7.25 and 7.26. Add actions to show a toolbar as a menu at the mouse cursor. This is a neat one, and I think something that probably everyone could probably find a use for. So if you know about toolbar editing already, um, you know that it creates a toolbar, right? So we've got these 32 different toolbars. Let's say toolbar 32 and you can add some actions. Let's just remove that, add in. Honestly, I'll just grab a few random actions here and I will add them to that menu. And there we go. Hit apply. And now this is toolbar 32. In the action list, what they've added is a way to create a menu at your mouse cursor um, when you press a button to call that up. So um, rather than the toolbar appearing in the last place that toolbar appeared before. It will now just pop up at the mouse cursor, uh, but not as a toolbar, but just as a, a sort of a right-click menu kind of list. Search for toolbar and menu. And now there's a bunch of actions in here. So there's 16 MIDI toolbars that can be brought up as a menu and 32 main toolbars that can be brought up as a menu. And so I'll just add that to a uh, shortcut at five and overwrite that. And so now where I have my edit cursor, I will press F5 and those actions come up as a menu. So this is great for anytime you want kind of the functions of a toolbar, but uh, sort of just to pop up as needed, you choose an action and it, and it goes away. Whereas uh, a toolbar would stay in that position until you close it. Again, you can have 32 of these just for the main window, another 16 for the MIDI editor, so I think you'll find some fun uses for this. Track control panel. Do not change track selection when clicking on TCP track resize divider. This is a very simple change, but essentially if you've got a track selected and you go and resize one of the other tracks, your selection isn't going to change. A very small change, but again, it's, it's just refining the behaviors, making sure that everything works as expected and all that. Add option to add sequential hardware outputs for selected tracks when right-clicking IO button in TCP or MCP. So this is pretty sweet. Let's take these two tracks here. So I'll just shift click to select them. And then I will right-click on the routing button. And now this submenu uh, expands to add sequential mono hardware outs, stereo outs, or multi-channel outs for the selected tracks. And I can go to any of the hardware outputs that my device is capable of. So the first selected track will go to uh, main out, and then the second one will go to main out too. So for hardware routing to an external mixer or to headphone outs, things like that, that's gonna be much quicker. Preferences, add render peaks display settings to stats charts menu in preferences audio rendering. All right, so we're in preferences audio rendering and the stats charts button now has the render peaks display settings. And so these are just the same settings that you would see in the actual render process uh, window. Shading areas that do not contribute to LUFSI, marking overs, things like that. So you can kind of just set them up in advance or have them set kind of the same way for uh, globally within the preferences. Render. Automatically reopen render dialog modelessly when render is complete, unless set to auto close or auto return in render settings. Add option to shade areas that do not contribute to LUFSI. After rendering, if there's not too many overs, support moving edit cursor from one over to the next. All right, so let's render this project. So uh, some of the settings and buttons here at the bottom of the render to file window have been sort of reorganized. And I'll render it. This window. After render completes, it's going to automatically reopen. And then I can do things like adding markers, navigating to, to like the highest peak. And if I had multiple renders, like a, an item selection render, I would have, I would be able to select the different uh, sort of waveforms within this file list here. So as soon as this is done, it's gonna reopen this window, but it'll be a, a window I can navigate. Amaze balls the main project with. And you also notice that um, my render alert sound that I set up in a video quite a while ago actually now works with this window. At the time I recorded that video, a lot of thing features in this window were not Im implemented yet. And also they weren't compatible with that, that function to play a sound. 
So yeah, now that this window can reopen after rendering, it works perfectly with that render sound. So we can still have this window open. It used to have to close automatically in order to play the sound. And now it can stay open. And we can do things like moving uh, the position in uh, the timeline. We can add a marker here, right? And that shows there. The marker that I just created now shows in the render window. And the last time I talked about this, the markers could be added in here, but they wouldn't show in here, only show in the project. I think that's fine. Uh, I, I talked to the devs about this and, and they said, well, you can see that they implemented it, but it was showing what has been rendered, not what will be rendered, but it makes sense to show it in both places anyways. Again, those peak settings are in this window when you right click. I'll have a link to the video I made about the render sound effect in the description below. And the option to not have that window pop up at the end or to automatically close rather than reopen modelessly so you can navigate and all the, all the things I just showed you, that window won't stay open. It will Focus will return back to the main project. Add wildcards for length in hours, minutes, seconds, and milliseconds. So again, in the render window, click on wildcards, we go to position and length. There's now options for the length, which will automatically be hours, minutes, seconds, milliseconds. And then you can also use the length, hours, minutes, seconds, time uh, options. Uh, there, It's not showing the entire length in that unit, but uh, it is showing like sort of that that column of the of the the length format, so you could rearrange it in a different order or or something like that, or just use some of the info and not all of it. So if I I'll just show it in length, and it will be three dash thirty dot two six seven. So uh, three minutes twenty seconds and six hundred thirty seven milliseconds is the length, but if we change this to L-E-N-H-H, -H, this will now just be zero because it's zero hours. And L-E-N-M-M -M will be three minutes. Three and then dollar sign L-E-N-S-S, -S, and that, now that's 3.20. And the last thing I'll talk about is uh, not really in the change log, but there is a new um, ARM64 beta installer. So if you have like a Microsoft Surface Pro that's brand new with the, the ARM processor in it, there's a special build of Reaper for you and you can help test Reaper on the ARM uh, for Windows processors. And that's it for this update video. Uh, lots of little things, but I think overall a very good couple of updates lots of little things that are really helpful. If you missed any of the previous update videos, I'll have a link to the playlist down below going all the way back to 5.0. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Follow me on Facebook and Twitter. Support the Reaper blog through Patreon. Visit reaper.blog for more tutorials.